Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sustainability by Design, looking at how uh, we can have a focus shift for a greater business impact using design. Uh, I'm joined by two uh, leaders in their field to help me unpack that. Shirsty Lund is here. Hi, Shirsty. Um, Shirsty's Head of Business Europe at Design It, which is a Wipro company. Um, there, Shirsty is leading the European studios in Design It. Um, and that Design It's a design and uh, experience innovation company, in case you don't know. And they're working with sustainability every day. In fact, Shirsty is. And it's, it's fair to say it's not only work as well, Shirsty, is it? It's a bit of a passion that you're curious about as well. Definitely, Phil. Definitely. And uh, it's great to have you here, Shirsty. And Lisa Chong is also with us, the CEO of the Index Project. Um, now, the Index Project is a non-profit organization uh, in the business of giving recognition, guidance, and support to ideas that improve life. Um, some of those ideas turn into businesses and organizations uh, using design to bring uh, humanity forward, if you like. Um, all of them apply sustainability by design. And I think, Lisa, it's fair to say you're witness to the impact they have. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Phil. It's great to have you both here. And I, I want to dive in by just asking what it means to design sustainably. And and before we even go into that uh, film, probably we need to define what is sustainability, right? Because uh, I would say that we put a lot of focus these days on the environmental part, which is super crucial. But I would say that sustainability goes much broader than that. For me, it's extremely important to also talk about social responsibility as part of sustainability as well. And I know both Lisa and I, when we do our walks uh, around the, the city of Copenhagen and talk about different topics we're passionate about, this is one of them, that we want to also highlight and push that forward as well, that sustainability has an environmental part, but it also has a social responsibility part. So that's important in order to, to talk about sustainability, I think. Yeah, I fully echo um, with what you say, Shasti. And, and of course, you know, when we talk about design, um, we, we mustn't forget the user, um, the user being in the central part of the focus um, and, and understanding the user's needs, right? So whether that's, um, you know, for human or life uh, driven qualities, you know, we, we're also focused on just making sure that the end goal isn't always profit margins, but ensuring that there's quality of life uh, for people and planet. I agree. In, in terms of sustainability, it feels like we're paving the road as we're, as we're walking along it as well, and especially in many businesses. Um, I've heard this analogy used before, actually, as well. What kind of challenges are businesses and organizations, even individuals, facing when it comes to sustainability and designing with sustainability? I think exactly that actually, Phil. The fact that you have to pay the way while you're building uh, or having very uh, high ambitions, which is great. We see a lot of bold ambitions out there, a lot of uh, are really strong uh, strategies as well. But at least for, for our clients that design it, we see that a lot of them taking that ambition and making it tangible and understand uh, what kind of action you need to take to just get there is uh, re requires a lot of thinking and requires probably a lot of different thinking than, than many businesses have done in the past. Thank you. Completely agree. Reason. I mean, yeah, no. So, I mean, I, I, I completely follow that uh, that line of thinking. And I think maybe also the challenges for businesses is to to look at new ways of measuring success uh, and, you know, redesigning that. Um, you know, we, we've mostly come to agree that growth at all costs is just a mentality that we have to move away from. It's a, eroded our planetary boundaries and it's something that we have to address um, urgently. So, you know, strategies and plans and, 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 you know, things that just only focus on growth um, and growth at all costs really have to be uh, rethought um, and no better opportunity than in a way the, the, the pandemic. You know, we've seen how devastating um, it's been for, for people um, and for society and businesses at large. It's, it's forced us to be existential on many levels. 
Um, and, and, you know, that, that presents itself an opportunity because, you know, this is a great opportunity to, to reset uh, some of those boundaries um, and, and reshape uh, the way we want to, to live our lives uh, and run our businesses. And, and I think actually, yes, sir. Sorry, chef. Sorry, go for it. I think uh, this has also opened up, which I think is essential for for driving business or sustainable businesses, is to think, rethink the way that we think about partnerships. I think that what we're seeing is very different way of partnering. Uh, commercial organizations with nonprofits, with governments, with even competitors that we haven't seen in the past, because we're tackling something which is much larger than ourselves. Uh, and we're actually questioning and putting each other accountable for that progress as well, which I think is a really nice thing and has only been emphasized and, and highlighted even more as, uh, as part of the pandemic, I would say. I think that's really interesting what you say there about these opportunities, about the growth, about the partnerships, but also the environmental factor. I mean, uh, Wipro, which is a company that owns Design It, um, they've uh, they've committed to reducing um, greenhouse gases, net zero greenhouse gases by 2040. Um, but I guess this is sustainability in general is not only about reducing; it's also about adding as well. Isn't that right? Mm. Very much so. I think this is where design and innovation plays a huge part, actually, is to uh, is to rethink, but also uh, create new solutions that still is desirable for us as human beings, but are also thinking about planet and social responsibility while we're doing that. And I think as part of the index projects as well, Lisa, we've seen a lot of ideas uh, that are really pushing forward and have sustainability at the core uh, of, uh, of the essence of the idea, let's say. Thanks. Lisa, yeah, are you seeing any... Oh, sorry for the delay, Lisa, but are you, are, you, are you seeing any examples in this field as well? Yes, I mean, we, we see so many ideas and great examples that, um, that can really prove to be aspirational. Um, you know, coming back to what you said earlier about adding value, I mean, we, we've just a couple of con concrete examples. I mean, we, we've seen a company, for instance, called Ananasanam. Uh, they produce a material called Pinyatex, and that's turning waste streams um, into value by creating um, alternatives to leather and plastic leathers, for instance. Um, so using, you know, the, the bits of, 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 of pineapple waste that would have just ordinarily been um, incinerated or thrown out or just uh, wasted, essentially, um, becoming something that, that that's uh, hugely val valuable for brands like H&M, Nike, Hugo Boss. Um, so, so creating some some meaningful and tangible ways of of, of turning something that's uh, that's very, very wasteful into um, opportunities. Um, another example that I think is um, really, really exciting is a drone delivery company called Zipline. Um, many of you may be familiar with it, but that imbe uh, completely embeds impact into its core. Um, and the business is centered around distributing medical supplies, blood platelets, vaccines in hard to reach areas. So, you know, um, the, what's what's really beautiful about this company is that um, serving markets like Rwanda and Ghana first and prioritizing, um, you know, the sustainable growth in, in these regions by implementing best in class drone technology. I mean, that that just completely challenges, you know, where we see, um, you know, the central uh, hubs of innovation, not just being you know, Western centric or Northern hemisphere based, but actually, you know, implementing the best uh, innovative technologies in, in, in countries that really will thrive um, with that te technology growth. Thanks, Lisa. Whilst improving lives, of course, you know, and, and, and you know, that, that's the beauty of it. Absolutely. I bet you're sitting on many examples that come through the index project. Actually, it must be quite fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's an absolute pleasure and privilege. Shirsty and Lisa, thank you. Our time is up. I'm sure it's a discussion that we'd love to continue more. Um, maybe we'll get the chance to do so. I hope everybody watching as well it sparks some ideas for them. So.
Thank you for your time. Thank you, Phil. Thank you so much.